If you've ever found yourself exhausted and unable to power through a big, loud song, then today's lesson is for you. Without overcoming this, nailing songs or playing with a band will really be a struggle. But fortunately, the solution is actually very simple. You're tired because you're playing too hard and working too hard to do it. I'll help you solve this today. You can do this. Hey, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer. I'm so glad you're hanging out today. I help you become the drummer other people want to jam with and have in their band. And we do this by teaching you the non-glamorous core drumming skills that matter the most and that get you results the fastest. So we're digging into this whole issue that I hear from so many students of you're, you're getting physically tired when playing songs. And so you just feel like you don't have enough stamina to get through it and you feel like you never will. Um, take for instance, a song like Clocks by Coldplay. Uh, hard to believe that song's like 20 years old now. But Clocks by Coldplay, it's one of those fast songs that's just very driving. You've got the eighth notes going on on the ride and a lot of eighth notes on the kick. And so it just kind of feels exhausting. And with a song like that, you get to this point where if you're starting to get tired, your technique starts to go out the window. You start to get stiffer. You start to squeeze the sticks tighter. You start to get pain here. You start to get stiff up here. You realize you're not sitting straight. Your legs start straight. It's just, it's just this downward spiral when you get tired and that's incredibly frustrating. So I'm gonna help you solve this today. Before we do that, I've got a free gift for you in the description I want you to go grab. It's, as always, going to be something to help you additionally on top of today's lesson, I hope. Um, this is my 30 days to rock four-way coordination. 30 days to four-way rock coordination for the beginner drummer uh, or even for the intermediate drummer who needs to brush up, but especially you beginners because if you don't have coordination on the drums, everything's going to be difficult, everything's going to be a struggle. But with co coordination, with that four-way limb independence, everything's easier, more fun, and you're able to make music on the drums. And this guide is just your step-by-step, -step, 30 steps. It might take you 30 days, it might take you a few months, um, but that's not the point. What matters is going through this. It's just a linear method, going through this one groove at a time. Each one's a little bit more challenging and building upon the previous one. And so you begin building four-way coordination without even realizing it, having fun in the process. And when you do that, everything gets easier. So go grab that guide. It's gonna help you out a whole bunch. Build your four-way coordination totally free in the description. And uh, I think that's gonna be a great way for you to apply what we're talking about today, as a matter of fact. So go grab that. So I have a, a paid membership community with where all my top students are. These are fantastic people that are working so hard at the drums and who are so excited about the drums. And something that we do together inside this community is we learn a new song each month. And something that I see and hear from so many of these students is that they're, they're just struggling to have the, the energy, the strength to get through a song whenever we do something that's loud and fast, kind of like Clocks by Coldplay or The Middle by Jimmy Eat World. Just think any kind of fast, energetic song. So many students of mine have had a hard time really powering through it. And so it's been a real issue. So my theory here, and stick with me here because I know part of this is going to sound like a, duh, this is stupid Stick with me. You're getting tired because you're playing too hard and working too hard to do it. Now, the second part of that is really the critical thing we want to get into because obviously if you're playing super hard, you're going to wear yourself out, especially if you're a beginner and you're trying to play really hard. And so I know that that's super obvious that maybe the reason why you can't get through the song is because you're trying to play too hard. That's where you've got to be patient with yourself and be okay with playing more lightly. But really the critical thing we kind of want to get into today is the working too hard to do it? Are you working too hard to play loudly? So what's the progressive method for getting to where we can play loudly well? Because we know we want to do that. We want to play loudly, but maybe it's just not working out right now. And that's, that's where we want to go today. So we've got a few action steps here. This is going to be super simple and broken down as always. I want you to practice playing softly while still staying loose and relaxed. So if you've watched many of my videos at all, especially lessons on technique, something that comes up time and time again is that quiet playing leads to precision and control. This isn't something I came up with. This is a George Lawrence Stone thing in stick control. I've got a copy of it down here. Every drummer should have a copy of stick control by George Lawrence Stone. Something he says at the beginning is that quiet playing leads to control and also slow playing, you know, quiet, slow playing. These are, these are things that we all need to be practicing. And so that's where we want to start with this. And I'll explain a little as we go of what will happen as a result of you practicing these quiet, slow things. Um, ultimately, this is going to get you where you want to go. 
But here's the key. It's, it's not so much what you're practicing as it is how you're practicing it. And so we want to start with singles. We want to just practice quiet singles. So I could just say, all right, play singles. And so you could sit there and play some singles while you're watching a movie and you're not paying attention to your hand. That's no good because what's more important here is how you're practicing it. What are you thinking about and paying attention to while you practice those singles? Well, right now that's going to be playing softly and not really playing that fast either. Maybe just this right here. But then something else you can do, so we've got our, our quiet singles here, you can also try to increase your stick height without getting louder. So try this. So the goal is to stay as quiet as you can. Pick a dynamic, maybe about right here, where we've got, I don't know, a six inch stick height maybe. And see if you can get so loose and fluid and relaxed with your arm motion here that you can increase your stick height without really getting much louder. You might get a little bit louder, that's okay. Point is, try to not go, see if you can go like this, where it's just this kind of loosey goosey flowy kind of motion where we're not actually playing any harder than we were right here. So we could just keep our stick height here or we, we could increase our stick height but not hit harder. Just try doing that. So really the essential thing going on here is something that we like to call artificial rebound. We've got other lessons on this where the whole, the entire goal is to form your fulcrum point here with the stick and then swing the stick back and forth. And the idea is that if you can do this and establish this motion right here, just in midair, then you can use this motion, a little bit of forearm up and down, this right here. You can use this motion to get rebound on any surface because if we're essentially getting rebound without hitting anything right we're doing this we're creating this fake rebound because we have a back and forth motion so if we can do this and we can get rebound from nothing that means we can get rebound from anything that means we can now have this fluid kind of motion and ultimately that's the topic for another lesson we've, we've got other lessons about that for more detail on this but this is the kind of thing I want you thinking about right now while you're practicing these quiet singles. The goal is to start quiet and see if you can increase your stick height a little bit, where it's just that whole goal of floating along, where we're, we're using some stick height, but play as softly as you can, even with that stick height. Then let's move from that to a quiet money beat. So money beat is just kick on one and three, snare on two and four. I know I've got my practice pad on here, my Aquarian super pad. I love these practice pads. This is not an official endorsement, but I just, I love super pads. Um, I've had this one for like seven years now and it's been fantastic. If you want a really good practice pad, you can set on your snare and then turn the snares on. It feels a lot like playing a snare. It's got a great articulation to it. Um, anyways, I'll stop talking about the practice pad, but it's Aquarian Super Pad. Go check it out if you're interested. Um, so we're gonna leave it on here for now. But if we do a money beat, what we wanna do here is play a quiet money beat. Not play super loud, just be super chill with it. So you know, this is our stick height right here. We've got a, a pretty chill right hand stick height. Uh, left hand can be a little bit more, but not so much that it ends up hitting this stick. And we're also utilizing some prep stroke with the left hand. One and two and three. Up, down, and one and two. That gives us so much fluidity and it helps with timekeeping and just being more solid with when we hit the snare. Our focus right now is not necessarily on kick technique, but something I do want you doing also is bouncing the beater because the same thing we talked about with the hand right here, of having stick height but not getting a lot of volume, same thing can happen on the kick. Because if you can sit here and do this with your kick drum, hopefully you can see this okay from the overhead camera, you can do this, then that means that, okay, if we can get rebound, again, rebound in quotation marks, artificial rebound, without even touching the head, that means we should be able to get that same rebound playing very softly like that. And so that gives us fluidity. That's the big secret to fluidity having motion, but being able to maintain a motion and then control the dynamics within that motion, rather than having to have a tiny motion for quiet playing and a big motion for loud playing. We wanna establish a motion and then pull our dynamics out of that. And so the same approach here that we did with left hand up here on the practice pad applies to right foot down there. So as we're doing our money beat, we wanna be 
pretty chill on the kick, pretty chill up here. Nice chill timekeeping. You can move over to the ride if you wanted to. My guess is that at this at this point you might you might be feeling uncomfortable. You might be feeling unstable and like you're about to it's kind of like you're tiptoeing down the stairs. And it's like you're trying to go down the stairs really softly and you're afraid you're going to trip and you're just going <laughs> to and it's just going to get faster. And that's a valid fear because a lot of times drummers have a hard time playing softly because we're just not used to it. We want to bring energy and we feel like in order to bring more energy, we got to bring more volume and so we got to really bring it. And so we don't really practice playing softly, and so we don't really get smooth enough in our playing. There's a lot of drummers out there who can play loudly. Maybe you've, maybe you've heard some of these drummers at a venue, at a music venue, at a restaurant, bar, whatever, where there's a band playing, and the drummer's just playing so loud. It's unbearably loud. And you're just trying to have a conversation with your buddy, and you can't because the drums are so loud, probably because that drummer, even though in theory they might know how to play soft, uh, they're so out of their comfort zone doing that, they feel sloppy when they play soft. And that might be what you're discovering here, that when you get soft, you have a tendency to now rush. Because it's a lot easier to play fast when you're playing softly. And that's kind of the truth we want to land on here for one thing, that you're going to be able to power through a loud, fast song if you just make it a quiet, fast song. Don't try to play loud, just play more softly. If you're playing Clocks by Coldplay, Sure, it doesn't sound like the record, and eventually, yes, you want to get louder, but if you're playing quietly, you can get through the song now, and you're not going to get exhausted, and instead of focusing on volume, you can focus on precision. And so there's an interesting thing that happens here, which is smoothness and precision. These things are built at these quiet, chill dynamics. It's just like the George Lawrence Stone thing from Stick Control. Quiet playing leads to control. That's critical. So we've practiced the money beat, whatever other basic beats you can think of, playing nice and soft. Practice your favorite song softly, whatever the favorite song is. So we, we keep talking about clocks, but whatever your favorite song is that maybe it's a fast song that you're struggling to get through, just practice playing it softly. Don't put any pressure on yourself to be loud. Just be nice and soft and chill and see if that makes it easier to keep up the whole way. And then this is where we kind of bring this full circle and we, we start thinking long-term because this is the short-term exercise. This is what I want you to do today and the next day and for the next few weeks. Focus on that, that chill kind of playing making sure you don't rush when you're staying chill. But if you do rush, hey, on the bright side, that means you're able to play faster when you're playing softly, which is just a natural law of physics. That it's easier to go softly than because your arm can, can only go so fast. There's just laws of physics. You'll be able to play faster when playing chill. But that's, that's our, our short term here. But thinking more long term, I want you to test your speed over time. As you're working on the quiet playing, you'll notice how you can start getting faster. The quiet playing leads to control and precision, which then makes speed happen more naturally. So you can focus on your speed and then over time, gradually work on increasing your volume. And so what will happen as you repeat these steps, you're doing your quiet singles each day, your quiet money beat, and then whatever song you're working on and just focus on being quiet. But see if you can, probably the best thing to do is record yourself or video yourself each time you do it. So you've got that benchmark of, okay, here's how loud I was last time I played this. And then each day or each week, gradually level up your volume just a little bit and see, okay, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling relaxed, I'm getting precise, and I'm able to go as fast as I want to now that I'm playing nice and chill. I'm going to up my volume just a little bit. Practice really paying attention to your dynamics. That's going to be challenging to consistently say, all right, I'm going to be at this volume on Tuesday, and this volume Wednesday, this volume Thursday. That's hard to do. That in and of itself is a huge challenge, but that's tremendously helpful to you as a drummer who needs to learn to control your dynamics so that you're not that guy at the restaurant who's just wailing away on the cymbals so that nobody can have a good time there because they can't hear because you're bashing cymbals so loudly. You need to be able to control your dynamics and maintain a dynamic level for an entire song, even if that dynamic level is quiet. So that's kind of another, another facet to this, that you're going to find that your dynamic control gets so much better by practicing this. Meanwhile, because you're gradually increasing your dynamic, it's like gradually, it's like working out where you're gradually increasing your weights. Your goal isn't to do, you know, three curls with a 50 pound dumbbell. Your goal is to do a whole bunch of curls with a light one, and so work on your stamina and your endurance with a light weight and then each day gradually or each week gradually increase the weight just enough 
that then over time you realize, you know what, I've gotten a lot stronger and I've barely felt the whole process. It's been a fun, chill process the whole time without me striving. And that's really where we want to land this. I want you to get to where you can play the loud and fast songs without striving. These are the steps to get there, especially if you're a beginner drummer and you're frustrated because this will spare you the frustration. You'll still be able to have fun and meet your goals and just gradually inch your way up there. And I promise you, you will get there. Honestly, this is the path that I took because naturally I was a very quiet drummer starting off. Maybe it's my personality. Maybe it's because I'm an introvert. I'm a quiet person. I didn't naturally just smash the cymbals playing the drums. I was always pretty chill. And so what I found was that I was able to reach my speed goals quickly but not my volume goals. I wasn't able to get through a loud fast song, but I could play that loud fast song quietly. And from there I was able to inch my way up and that was a great path to take and it worked really well and I think it'll work for you too. So what can you expect at this point? If you do what I've taught you today, you take action on this, you practice your quiet playing each day and you gradually level up your volume and your speed's gradually increasing too. Two things, these are kind of the, the two truths here of, of practicing this. One, speed and control begin at low volume. If you wanna play precisely with control, in other words, sound like a professional, it all starts at low volume. And once you can do that, once you're playing tightly, because this is also a coordination thing too, if you can play the money beat quietly and tightly, hey, that's tremendous because that means now you can play it more quickly and tightly or louder and tightly. So that's really important. Speed and control begin at low volume. Number two, kind of the what comes after that, Low volume practice develops smoothness, which creates speed. You can't have speed without smoothness. The smoothness has to come first, and you're gonna build so much of that by practicing quietly. That quiet control leads to smoothness and fluidity, which then creates speed and tightness and the ability to play whatever you wanna play and it still sound good. That's so critical, so foundational. So therefore continue with this, keep going with this, keep taking action on this, and you will eventually build the speed and the volume that you want. Even if you're trying to play a song like Everlong by the Foo Fighters, I can just see Dave Grohl in the studio playing, recording that drum track back in like 1997, Everlong, and just hair going everywhere. He was probably playing so loud, and I probably still can't play that loud. I'm just not a loud drummer like Dave Grohl. But point is, you will eventually get to where you can play a song like Everlong that is not only fast, but also loud if you're gonna bring that heavy rock energy. You will get there by taking this approach of practicing quietly, letting the speed come naturally, and then gradually leveling up your volume. So, question for you, what is your goal, loud and fast song? I think mine was Everlong. It, I think it really was. Uh, when I first heard that song, I heard it long after 97. I was a tiny little kid in 1997. But I remember thinking, this song is so cool. I love this song. I, I want to get to where I can play it. And it, it took some time. Um, what is your goal, loud and fast song? Tell us in the comments. Let's talk about some loud, fast rock drumming. And, uh, and let's encourage one another because you will get there. Even if you're a beginner, you're going to get there. All right. I hope this lesson's been helpful to you. Be sure to go grab that 30 Days to 4-Way Rock Coordination Guide because that's going to that's gonna be a great companion for you. The reason why I kept saying that early on was because now you've got a method of practice here. Apply this to those grooves. So as you're working through the, the Coordination E-Guide, practice playing those grooves lightly. And then from there, you can work on increasing your speed with them while paying attention to how tight you are which is critical for building coordination. And so that's kind of the funny thing here that we're working on building stamina, which will happen at the low volumes, but you're also gonna build a lot of coordination when you're practicing quietly and slowly and really paying attention to what your limbs are doing. Um, that's practicing um, actively, practicing actively instead of passively. That's a big thing. So go grab that guide. My free gift to you is gonna help you out a whole bunch so that you can build coordination and just feel more comfortable and confident at the kit as you're building that stamina so that you can go nail songs, play with a band, and never feel like you can't play a certain song because it's too loud or too fast. All right, have fun, stay non-glamorous, know that you can do this. I'll see you on the next lesson.